Republican Congressman Fred Upton is getting death threats for voting in favor of the bipartisan infrastructure bill. In fact, he's not the only Republican who did so. There were over a dozen who voted in favor of the bipartisan infrastructure bill in the House. And of course, in the Senate, there were 19 Republicans who also did the same. That's something that Donald Trump is not in favor of because he sees that as providing Joe Biden a win for his reelection campaign. Now, keep in mind that corporate donors loved the infrastructure bill because there were all sorts of corporate giveaways in that bill. So, you know, you got these Republican congressmen between a rock and a hard place. What do they do? Do they serve their corporate donors or do they serve their daddy Trump? Well, Fred Upton decided to serve his daddy, not his daddy Trump, but decided to vote in favor of what his corporate donors want. And now he's suffering consequences for that. Let's hear the kind of threats he's getting. This is a voicemail that he shared with CNN. Traitor. That's what you are. You're a piece of traitor. I hope you die. I hope everybody in your family dies. You piece of trash mother. Voted for dumbass. You're stupider than me. He can't even complete a sentence. You dumb mother. Traitor. Piece of piece of trash. Hope you die. Hope your family dies. Hope everybody in your staff dies. You piece of now, for members of Congress, a voicemail like that is incredibly jarring. For people like me and Jank, a voicemail like that is called Tuesday, um, <laughs> something that we deal with on a regular basis. But that's not to minimize what he uh, is dealing with, with these death threats. Um, in fact, he claims that uh, this became an issue after a member of his own party, Marjorie Taylor Greene, had uh, tweeted out the names of the Republican Congress members who voted in favor of the bill. And she also included some phone numbers. Here's one of the tweets. She says 13 Republicans voted with Pelosi to spend $7.5 billion to build EV charging stations all over America to force Americans to drive you know, battery driven cars. As CCP, of course, is a reference to communist China. Um, China dominates the EV battery market by over 80%. And the US can't even compete with less than 10% market share. Um, I think maybe that's a, an issue with what we decided to invest our resources into, Marjorie Taylor Greene. You can't complain about how we can't compete with China when we refuse to compete with China and invest in renewable energy. But nonetheless, after that, uh, she had shared uh, the phone numbers and the names of the Republican congressman who voted for the bill, thus leading to the type of voicemails that uh, Upton received. Cenk. Yeah, look, uh, we needed a populist uprising against corporate rule. But my God, the first uh, part of the uprising has turned into a total S show. I mean, insanity. Uh, lunatics have taken over the asylum. So they're like, oh, you know, yeah, okay, Upton's a corporate Republican. I, I can't stand corporate Republicans and corporate Democrats. But that doesn't mean you should threaten to kill them, you lunatics. How about you just vote them out of office? That would be great. And I don't look, I don't agree with the populist right on social issues at all. I find them repugnant. And I, I, I don't think they really believe in democracy. I'm worried about their violent tendency, all those things, right? But if you want to get rid of corporate Republicans by outvoting them in your primaries, have at it, Hoss. That is an American way to proceed, right? But this threats to kill people. It's it's vigilante justice. It's brown shirt behavior. It's Gestapo like stuff where that you you purposely egg on your supporters to do stochastic terrorism. And so and by the way, the right wing think that they're clever. They've now learned that you, in order to evade responsibility and culpability, criminal culpability, you don't say I'm going to kill you. You say I hope you're going to die. I hope your family's going to die. So that's we see that every day. Right in the comments, right? So, uh, and it's not clever. It's you're still talking about violence, you're still threatening it, you're still trying to unsettle people, and you're a monster. You're a monster. Anybody who says, I hope your family dies, no matter what the circumstances are, is a verifiable, terrible, evil person, okay? Like, for example, I can't stand Kyle Rittenhouse. I would never say, I hope his family dies. What an insane thing to say, right? So I wouldn't even say I hope he dies. Of course I wouldn't say that. Let alone his family. That's because you guys, because the right wing is deeply immoral. Okay, now, but this also goes to show you the difference again between the Republicans and the Democrats, because while Marjorie Taylor Greene is effectively bullying 
any faction of the Republican Party that won't agree to the most extreme elements. She put, she docks their phone numbers of her colleagues, Republicans, not even Democrats, Republicans, right? Meanwhile, Democrats are so scared to criticize their own. So like the six just Democrats voted no on this last bill. And oh my God, the world has collapsed in on them. All of me, how dare you vote against the master leader Pelosi? This is a crime against humanity, right? I mean, and so they're justifiably like unnerved, jeez them. Like, and all they did was vote their conscience. They didn't even say anything bad. They didn't criticize the other guys. They didn't call them out for corruption, which they definitely should. They didn't put out their phone numbers. You see the difference? And by the way, the Marjorie Taylor Greene stuff is deplorable, but in terms of actually putting a spotlight on people doing things that you think are wrong. Does that work? Of course it works. But our side won't even use the tamest version of that for political reasons, strategic reasons, while the other side uses it in the most extreme way possible. It's okay, Jink. Our side trusts Biden, so everything's going to be okay. I do want to go to one other part of Representative Upton's interview with CNN because I found this portion of their exchange fascinating. Pay close attention to how Lindsey Graham gets thrown under the bus. Let's watch. You know what? It's a real step back. Thank goodness it wasn't a constituent. But I have a colleague, as you know, that put out the phone numbers of the 13 of us that voted that way. Be glad to defend that vote. And we've been working really since last spring on a bipartisan bill. This is, I think that call, I think. He might have been from South Carolina. His own senator, Lindsey Graham, couldn't find a closer confidant of President Trump than Lindsey Graham in, in his four years. Lindsey Graham voted for it. It passed 69 to 30 in the Senate. No, I, I, I love that moment because it's like, oh, thank God this guy wasn't a constituent of mine. But he is a constituent of Lindsey Graham's and he voted for the bipartisan infrastructure bill too. Get him. No, he didn't say get him, right? But it was just kind of fascinating how he starts off with, thank God it wasn't my constituent. But the constituent lives in a, you know, a state that Lindsey Graham represents. Um, one other thing I wanted to note, uh, this is just my, my whole take on the entire situation playing out. Look, when you are in a political environment where the conversation, where the discourse is not really about substance, it's not about policy, it's about manufactured culture wars, it's about cults of personality. It's about all this garbage that's very specifically meant to distract voters from the substance, from the fact that the economic situation is as dire as it is because both parties are beholden to corporate interests. This is what the society devolves to, okay? This is all tribalistic nonsense because the person who sent that voicemail is, isn't really looking at what's in the bipartisan bill. He's not fired up about the amount of spending. He's not fired up about you know privatizing public infrastructure. That's not what he's concerned about. He is taken in by Trump's cult of personality to him. That is all politics is at this point. And honestly, it's not his fault because politicians, make politics about this, right? Because they don't want you to focus on their corporate donors. They don't want you to focus on the fact that they have no solutions to better your life, especially Republicans. When was the last time Republicans had policy that was meant to better the lives of their own constituents? The only thing they accomplished under the Trump administration was tax cuts for the rich. They're beholden to corporate donors more than Democrats are, and Democrats are pretty bad themselves, right? And so again, this is what the conversation turns into. Cults of personality, tribalistic BS, rather than, hey, what's in the bipartisan infrastructure bill? What is my problem with the bipartisan infrastructure bill other than the fact that my daddy, Donald Trump, doesn't like it? You know? Yeah. No, Anna's spot on here. You know, look, there's good things in the bill like expanded broadband access. Is that the why the guy wants to murder? A Republican official? We're gonna have more broadband, I can get on the internet easier. I'm gonna kill you. No, he doesn't care about the policy at all. Is he upset about legitimate things you can be upset about in the bill? I mean, as Anna's pointed out, the stock market is sky high now. Why? Because those stocks are through the roof. This is the corporate bank bill. We told you the corporations are ecstatic. You could legitimately be upset about that, but why would you murder Upton? Like, it just doesn't make 
any sense. And if you're upset, you should be upset at the donors, not at their tools, their puppets, which are the politicians. But by the way, don't go trying to physically threaten the donors either. For God's sake, keep it political, keep it American. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.